Hey, bro. How are hey. you? Hey, I'm all right. Uh, whereabouts are you today? Do you want to check this out? I'm fucking, I'm at the studio. Okay. And there's a billabong out the back. <laughs> and there's Archie, the studio dog. I see him. Don't step on the dog. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all right. He'll be, he's, he's a strong boy. <laughs> Nice right. fucking a, a blue blue cattle. I mean, uh, blue healer. All right, Australian cattle, Australian cattle dog. To start off, I believe the album was supposed to be out a few months ago, and then it got delayed because why not? And so it's about to come out next week. So how are you dealing with all that? Um, I think it's you know what in uh, in this time right now, it's like I guess you have to look for silver linings. Um, and you can't complain about anything because everyone's going through it, you know? Um, so we're just trying to stay as positive as possible. Um, to be honest, like, um, we've been pretty much touring for the last six years nonstop. So I'm really enjoying just hanging out with my partner and being able to see my family and, you you know, and like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, I kind of needed a break. You just didn't Um, know it. (laughs) Exactly, you know, when you're yeah. just going, um, when you're going uh, helpful leather and you get wrapped up in in the world and all that stuff. So it's like, you know, I, I'm i really enjoying that side of things. And also, yep. um, you know, I'm an aspiring producer. So oh, good. To, be able to, to be able to stop and like really work on my production skills and, and all that kind of stuff is, um, has been pretty amazing as yep. well. And did you get to do much producing within the band here on the Glow? Uh, well, yeah, I guess the um, the you know I well that, that was a big part of 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 the record is that we were kind of you know we've been a guitar driven band for so long and uh, you start mucking around with beats and sequences and and right. and, uh, and synths and stuff like that and I guess. Um, you know, that was one of the reasons why working with Stuart Bryce was so great because he comes from that background and yep. for a guitar band transitioning into that, um, you know, uh, it's <laughs> nice to be able to do it legitimately. Yeah, yeah. So how do you think your fans are going to react to the newish sound that you've kind of taken on board on here, son? Uh, well, you know what, to be honest, I've never really thought about what the fans are going to think. I, I, I think if like... I don't know if that sounds selfish, but it's like uh, with our in, in the past, if we're happy with it, yep. then chances are other people are going to be happy with it. So okay. I think if you if you don't like, otherwise, um, it can kind of start sounding all a bit contrived and and too thought out. If you're making music for other people, so hmm. they'll think what they think. Lots of people, look, lots of the time to be honest, like when we've released new music, it sometimes takes the fans about six months to get their head around it. Right. In a collective sense. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So they go, and they think they want to hear the first record. They think they want you to do the first record three times, but if yeah, you yeah, did yeah. that, they'd be fucking bored <laughs> and, they'd, and they'd leave you. And you know what I mean? It's like, they think they want it to sound like that, but they don't really. Right. They, right. they want you to keep growing and maturing and pushing the boundaries of your thing. And, and from my experience, when people have gone, oh, this sound, like, oh, DMA is new. And then, like, six months later, it's their favorite song. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, then we, and, and you can see that in the gigs when people are singing back. And more. It, it's a very dense sound on some of these tracks. Is that what you're going for? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we've always kind of gone for the wall of sound thing, but it's never been so highly produced. Right. So maybe... It goes. It it is. Uh, it gets that extra depth, I guess, maybe because of that. Right. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, "Hello Girlfriend" in particular. It's kind of have. A, oh, nice. Wall of guitars happening. <laughs> That's right. Um, that song was originally written about the concept of someone waking up out of a coma. You know, hello doctor, hello right, mother, right. hello girlfriend. You know, all the family and like the doctors. Right. Right. You know, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Yep. Um, yeah, but the chorus was actually written about when I was living in Edinburgh, at, um, Edinburgh in Scotland, 
and um and I just moved into my new apartment. And so we do a lot of that. So that was Mason's part was was the hello it was the verses and 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 my melody was the um was the chorus and we do a lot of that in our songwriting where we call it um Frankensteining. Right. And um <laughs> basically it's like um because we have we love pop music and and when we try and write a song we try and have a verse, a chorus, a pre chorus, a riff and an outro. So right. and all five of those melodies have to be shit hot. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, let me swear. And how does the uh, that's right. How does the writing work? Does, does one of you bring a song in and the rest of you kind of jump all over it or do you do it together? Well, it's either the Frankensteining idea where we just kind of go through like voice memos yeah. <laughs> and like <laughs> go through our phone and we all pick the best ones and then we transpose the keys and put them into one thing or someone's kind of brought, you know, 75% of the song to the table right. and then we piece the last 25% right. percent together. Mm -hmm. And are you looking for an overall feel of the album? Do you want people to come away with hearing it, thinking a certain something? Yeah, I want, I want people to listen to it and know that, you know, we've always written pop melodies. I guess we've been a more guitar based band, but yeah, that the, with the glow is like, we said, we're going to make a bloody pop record in every sense of the way, you know? And like, and we, and we wanted to do that and not, and not make excuses for it or anything like that. You know, it's sometimes people do. And it's like, you know what? We just want to make a really great pop record. And, uh -huh. And we wanted to bring in like electronic um, uh, uh, elements to it because when we play, we're starting to get later slots and festivals now and we've got the rock and roll thing down pat and we've got the, the sing-along thing down pat, but we just needed to get people dancing. Right. And I think, I think we've achieved it through some of the songs. Well, life's a game of changing to get people dancing, don't you think? That's what I thought. <laughs> Was there much discussion about that among the three of you? Um, to get people dancing. Well, to, to, to make that song sound the way it does. Well, that was, I guess, one of the first songs that I'd written um, based off sequences and electronic drum beats. Right. And um, I wrote it when I was living in Edinburgh in Scotland. And, and I, I would walk around the streets. Have you been to Edinburgh before? I don't think so, no. It's uh it's quite um it looks like Hogwarts or something. <laughs> right. You know. It's like it's quite gothic and dark and yeah. amazing architecture and really old timey and like the sandstone buildings every I think they have a law even like that you have to only you have to build in sandstone. Right. You know, or like or at least um you know, like the front of the but the fa is facade, is that the right yep, word? Yep, the, yep, yep. Um has has to be in a certain type of architecture so it's cohesive with the um the rest of the city and it's um and it's really it's, i have this affiliation with scotland not only from our band but my partner's um father's from glasgow and and you know my dad's from the uk and just living there was really quite amazing and Mm. And um, and I would walk those streets and just listen to Chemical Brothers and Underworld <laughs> and Soul Wax, you know, and like right, right? And Soul Wax. Like I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They were good. So you know, and yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah. I was just kind of getting into that, and I was like using production as a songwriting tool to keep me on my toes. Right. And, and this is the third album, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So how does the interaction between the three of you work? Has it changed over the course of the three albums? Have people taken different roles? Um, to be honest, we're just, we're three best mates. Right. Like literally Tommy and Mason are my two closest friends. Right. I've obviously got a, you know, like I've got a few of them. I've probably got like five really close buddies and they're two of them. Right. And um and to be honest, these experiences that we've had through the band that other 
that no one else can relate to. Like the driving from bloody New York to LA on no <laughs> money, you know, and playing in front of seven people in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, uh, where was it? We were playing in one place. I think it was St. Lu- Louis or St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And like, pretty sure like, um, the only people in the crowd were the support band, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> and, um, Oh, one other guy who tried to steal merch. And, um, you know, and just like, I know that doesn't sound like an, but from that, and then like, you know, we just sold 8,000 tickets in, on, in a weekend in Manchester. And, cool. And, you know, playing the Brixton Academy and, and just, and watching like the fan base grow, particularly in the UK. And, yeah. And this is just a lot of, it, it's been a journey. And I think to do that with your best mates, it make, kind of makes you, if you don't, if you don't decapitate each other, um, right. it's just going to make you closer. Right, exactly. It's one or the other. You're either yeah, going gotcha. to have a falling out or you're going to be like closer and better than ever. Right, right. So when you're when you're in each other's faces like that, how do you manage not to annoy the bejesus out of each other? Well, we're all quite emotional people. So I think we're quite in tune with each other's emotions and you know what makes people tick. and um. And we're, um, we're, you know, we can gauge personalities, engage emotions. So, you know, we know when, when to push it and when not to. Yeah. Yeah. And so when do you start playing out again? Well, who knows, right? <laughs> who no knows? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, I guess Australia looked like it was doing pretty good. And then there's just been a massive um, corona flare up in Melbourne, right. which is where I'm based at the, I'm not there right now in New South right. Wales, but where I live. Um, so that's a bit worrying, but I just had an interview with a, a New Zealand, um, uh, print magazine. And it kind of feels like that New Zealand's not well, like, you know, New Zealand, uh, kind of, ahead of everyone. In we got it sorted. Of, it seems like, yeah, of course, you don't want to yeah. j- jump too soon, you know? So yeah, they kind of open up the borders to let other New Zealanders from overseas come in. But then some of those folks obviously have the virus and they get tested and then people freak out, but it's like, well, exactly. what are you going to do? They need to go somewhere, yeah. you know? So yeah, it's kind of, but yeah, everybody's locked down. Everybody did a pretty good job of staying, behaving themselves during the lockdown. So, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, there were lots of uh, uh, articles from Australia begging to have Aust- uh, Jacinda be the prime minister, <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous. She seems really, she's really great. Yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so hopefully you'll be, I don't know, what, 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 how do you think the audience is going to be and how do you think you're going to feel when you finally get face to face on stage? I think with the album coming out um, in a few weeks and with the stats on streaming at the moment, yeah, I think it's going to give people the time to actually really listen and learn the album. And I think that's going to make it, make it stronger when we come back um, in a live presence and to play these songs to people. And right. And they've had the time to learn it and they're more hungry than ever for live shows. Right, right. Which I'm really excited, which I'm really excited about. Because <laughs> I guess, I mean, you got a lot of streams. You're not going to get rich off of that, but at least you get a gauge as to how many people are paying attention to what you're doing, which has got to feel good. Well, yeah, we've made the mistake of we toured the UK off on the first week of our last record. Right. And, you know, that's some of our strongest fan bases over there. and. God bless them. They were trying to sing to the songs, but they'd only been out for a few days. So they didn't really know all the lyrics. And then you come back six months later and every single song off that record is being screened back at you. And that's my favorite moment. Excellent. Yeah. It's got to feel good. (laughs) It feels really good. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you'll be back over here and uh, we'll see the three of you on stage sometime, maybe before the end of the year. Who knows? It would be nice. Who knows? We'd love, but, but, but either way, we're looking forward to it. All righty. Well, thanks for taking time to talk to me. Enjoy the record. Have, have a good day.
Thank you so much. <laughs> My pleasure.